afternoon. Should I say, g'day shoppers. And uh, special shout out to some of my regular viewers, Eric. How are you going, Eric? Eric knows who I'm talking to. I'm in my best green jumper as always. Got to keep it regular. Um, lots of messages. All right. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? I met, I believe her name is Susie Diver. Yes, council. Susie Diver from the council and community engagement and some shit. Um, one, one quote, I asked some questions about it and one quote that was given to me, I said, who's that chick? And they went, oh, that's the new horrible Gina. <laughs> Remember we had Gina Woodhouse, who was the communications director. Communications, economic development, tourism and community relations, all that kind of crap. And she was pretty horrible and I've tried to be nice. Like She had a job to do and I think that job was to be horrible to Andrew Thaler and it didn't really work. But gave me a lot of a lot of material. Well, she's been somewhat replaced by this woman called Susie Diver and I've shared up her LinkedIn profile page. And we're going to call her Sour Susie, and I'll tell you the story. And I've got a prop that uh, I got off Sour Susie today. So, uh, <clears throat> Snow in our regional council has got some funding from the Disaster Relief Fund, this never ending bucket of money, apparently, to come up with disaster and resilience plans for communities. And I should have printed the brochure out and I could have read from it, but it basically says for selected communities and that they were having a public meeting in Nimitabel today between 2 and 4 p.m. And uh, it wasn't clear where, it's a community hall, but it wasn't. It was at the, um, at the Geldmacher Community Centre, which we have always said, if you're going to have a public meeting in Nimitabel, you have it at the Pioneer Hall because everyone will come. If you have it at the... Um, the, the headquarters of the Nimitable Advancement Group, no one will go near it because no one likes them, because they're horrible. So that was your first mistake. Second mistake was you didn't tell anyone the meeting was on. Council, no email blast, no Facebook post. I've checked nothing on Council's Facebook page about the public meeting today to look about, look at and discuss planning for disasters and resilience to disasters and recovery from disasters and also to learn from what we as a town as a region did during the bushfires for example or COVID we could say COVID was a planning disaster a public policy disaster and uh, we could do better but we didn't talk about that particularly so it was between two and four and I went up there with a mate at about 2.30 and uh, took my kids. We were expecting a uh, afternoon tea. No, not even a biscuit. So my poor kids were disappointed. They were uh, hoping for some free cakes or lemmingtons or something, strawberries even. Um, so yeah, that was a bit disappointing for the kids. But they amused themselves and played outside. And uh, it was an overwhelming attendance. There was uh, me, Ian, Marianne Renfrey, my horrible neighbour from around the corner, but she kind of pissed off when I got there. John and Jenny Elcock and Kel from the pub. And four council people. That's it. So five people from the community, four from the council, and five kids outside. I mean, honestly, it was, it was just a joke. So we sat, Ian and I sat. Ian was my mate. We went. We sat and listened for nearly 10 minutes and uh, Mary Ann Renfrew was ravening on about all the wonderful things that she did and that Nag did during the bushfires and whatever. It's just all, a lot of it's crap. And, uh, and then I wanted to know some basic details. What is this about? What is this funding? Is this funding for you guys, the council workers, or is this funding for the community? So this, um, this particular thing, this disaster resilience nonsense that they're on about, is apparently for selected communities. Didn't explain how that works. 
$297,000. And none of that money goes to us. That goes to Susie Diver and Pauline Cook from Monero Family Support Services and the other lady that was taking notes. And I think it's Robin Guthrie, Robin, the disaster coordinator that was appointed after the bushfires. Like they, they get the money. And they'll go and have these uh, meetings around the Shire and try to talk about lessons to learn and what we could plan to do. And apparently there's already been 10 of these types of meetings. One of them was bloody yoga. There's a whole bunch of women, like women workshops and all this kind of crap. My wife's made a very interesting observation to me tonight. She said that these things are not designed for people like Elisa. Elisa is happily married with five kids to me. She's not a woman in need. And so all these workshops and all this money is towards what they classify as women in need. So they don't tell Elisa or anyone else who's um, got their shit sorted, running a farm, happily married, whatever. They're, they're not the target audience. This is all about disaster and trouble and intervention and all this kind of crap. So... We went along to say, we've actually been trying to tell you what we did during the bushfires and how we dealt with that risk without any assistance from the council. And Susie Diver got stroppy. She got really stroppy really quickly because Andrew Thaler was there. Ian was disgusted. He wasn't going to put up with that shit. And he said, you know, you're not here to listen to us. It's plain and simple. We've come here to talk to you, but you're not interested. So they didn't give us their presentation, which is apparently what they were meant to be doing. They, we think they might have taken some notes, but uh, they didn't. Susie then basically chucked a shit, folded up her papers, rolled up her little brochure things, and basically I'm calling the meeting off. I'm closing the meeting. It's weird. And we tried to explain a range of things that we did. We even tried to make a bit of a joke about some of the things we did during the bushfires. Uh, I did get a bit of a laugh out of them at one stage. So, for example, for any new viewers, we live at Nimitabel. We were surrounded by fires during the major bushfire crisis that we had in 2020 in Australia. We're on uh, the east coast, on top of the escarpment, um, mostly surrounded by open paddocks with a bit of um, sort of bush on the hilltops and what have you. And we had fires at all four sides. And fire could come to us. And we, as a little village, we got our shit sorted. We set up uh, communication teams. We had UHF radios. We set up a Facebook chat, what we call a red chat and a blue chat. The red chat was emergency updates. The blue chat was more general updates. And um, people were encouraged to keep an eye on it. Uh, people were watching the news, listening to the radio, listening to the RFS broadcast because the Rural Fire Service Radios are, are broadcast over the internet, so you can listen to it. Um, the fires near me, mapping system, people were watching and giving updates. I went and bought about, I think it was $500 worth of food and toilet paper. This is a funny bit. Food, like hot chocolate, tea, coffee, uh, baked beans, spaghetti, cereal, milk, orange juice, juice. I bought a heap of shit and put it in our public hall in the main street. And see, at the same time this was happening, the whole of the east coast between uh, just below Nara, Batemans Bay, and the Victorian border, which is like 300 kilometres long, every tourist in that area was evicted from the coast and they had to drive through our town of Nimitabel. Every car, every tourist at a Christmas holiday, New Year's period. This was the um, 2nd of January or something like that. And we had three days of just bumper to bumper traffic with everyone come through our town. We didn't even have fuel here. We had nothing. And um, so I bought a stack of toilet paper, like a metre high, so that we had plenty of supplies in case the road was shut or an accident or the fire closed it and we had to try to accommodate um, families. Uh, families being kicked out of their holiday um, plans. And it didn't, we didn't need it. We opened up the showground. Um, I cut the locks on the tip so that people could get rid of any excess rubbish or green waste from their houses. And I did it with the permission of the mayor because um, the mayor said that he agreed with what I said, but he didn't think that he had the power to make that direction. I said, fine, you agree, I'll cut the lock. Council come out and lock to keep the tip again. So I cut the lock again and said, I'll keep cutting the locks until you run out of locks. 
so they left it open for a while. And everybody could grab any green waste and shit that's laying around on their properties and clear it all away. And even my mate Rodney, he's a tree, uh, tree um, lopper, he had a really big ute. He just drove around to all these people's properties and just picked up all their shit for them and took it to the tip. Awesome. He just did it. That's what we do out here. We just help each other. We put water tanks on our utes. We got water pumps. We had generators. We had a 24-hour watch where people would keep an eye on the communications of where everyone else slept. And we looked out for uh, people that had kids. And we did all this stuff. That's resilience, preparedness, and then looking at it afterwards. That's what we should be organizing ahead of any future problems. That was what it could have been about today. Let's get that going again. But no. They bought along on reconnect. Bloody internet. I got a phone call and it drops out. Uh, they bought along this glossy brochure, Bumbalong um, Community Preparedness Planning Workshop from Bumbalong. That's a little, little tiny, tiny community just north of Redbow from May 2022. And like, yep, Bumbalong, you've, you've had a reasonable effort, at, uh, effort and go at it. I think only about five people from the community went to this. They, again, they slow connection they didn't really advertise it but this thing i gotta read some of this shit to you i'm gonna screenshot it post it's crap i'm gonna be rude i'm really gonna be rude this is the kind of shit that you produce when you let women run these workshops these council worker women run these workshops it's fluffy it's glossy it looks nice it's shit it's complete fucking shit it doesn't address the issue. It talks about what would it look and feel like if Bumbalong was really well prepared for future disasters. It would look like a new bridge because the people of Bumbalong can't get in and out of their bloody area because the bridge is fucked and the council won't fix it. That's what it looks like. A new bridge about a metre higher than it is now so it doesn't flood. What have we already got that we can build on to make us feel more for the future? A bridge! <gasps> but that word's not in here. Another phone call. There's this, this other crap in here. Um, what do we need to work on now? The group identified the following as important issues to work on now. Identify regular dates for community centre working bees, first aid training, psychological first aid. A list of priority jobs as a community for individuals who feel unprepared. Still need to continue rebuilding our own property. Develop a matrix of people and assets. Identify what does being prepared mean. <laughs> valley reconnecting, how do we reach out to others in the valley? And it started off with one of these sidebars saying, Words that describe how people arrived, arrived at the workshop. Healing, direction, teamwork, resilience, excited, curious, reflection, connection, open-minded, impressed, connection, twice, community support. How are you leaving today? Grateful, reflecting on our similarities and differences, Thankful for the openness and honesty of the group. Refocused and reminded of the strength in community. Relief and optimism. Leaving more prepared. Feeling like we're working towards a common goal. Turning the momentum into action. We can focus on the future. Feeling positive. Opportunity to reflect. Overwhelmed a bit. Positive as well. We are getting there. It's all about the feels. Not about actually what are we going to do. For example... One of the things that I pushed the council to do is to buy some generators and diesel powered water pumps. Take Nimitabel, for example, town of 270 odd people. If we lose electricity in the district, which we did during the fires, sewerage system stops working. The sewerage pump down at Lake Wallace will stop pumping from the well. It will flood. It'll fill up with sewerage and flood into our little lake which is then a pain in the ass to, teal, to clean. The sewerage treatment station will stop working if any sewerage actually gets to it because it's kind of uphill. 
So you've got to pump the sewage to it. And we run out of town water because we have to pump the water out of the McLaughlin River. And I said to the council, I've got a big generator that will run the electric water pump on the McLaughlin River or it would run the sewage plant. So if you put a diesel backup pump on the water supply in the river, means we've got water. Doesn't mean we can drink it, which we can't drink it now, but you've got water. And we put a diesel generator on the sewage plant, we keep the sewage plant running. Then it doesn't matter what happens, we've got those two things covered. We don't need street lights. We don't, we, we've all got our own little generators for our houses to keep our fridge going, all that kind of crap. That's preparedness, that's resilience. Breadbow could do that on Barlow, it's a bit bigger, but they could have a bigger generator, for example. Um, noisy car. That's resilience, that's planning and preparedness. And that's simple. So theoretically, this money that we would be able to access could potentially support us getting a generator or a diesel pump. And that same generator might be just held in council's fleet and that same water pump might be held in council's fleet to be sent to Calcite, Adminaby, Breadbone, Michelago, wherever. Things like that. It's getting dark. That's the opportunity. But instead, Sour Susie got the shits and closed the meeting and cancelled it. So you've just earned yourself the title Sour Susie. And that's Susie Diver. And who is Susie Diver? She married, um, whatever that diver dickhead name is, that, that bloke, Stuart Diver, the one that got stuck in the Threadbow landslide. That's who she is. She's with him. And she thinks her shit doesn't stink. And she thinks that she can be rude to me as a public servant. When the meeting was closing and we were all leaving and I was just making some notes of who was there, I said to... Susie, what's your last name, Susie? Um, so I can write it down. Who are you? I'd never met her before. Uh, she knew everything about me, but I'd never met her before. And she said, I don't have to tell you that. I said, you do. You're a public servant. You should have, you've got to tell me your name. You're a public servant and you're working for the public. Uh, I'm not telling you my surname. Oh, well, Susie, you just give me a reason to tell the story and to label you Sour Susie, another failed communicator you didn't tell anybody this meeting was on and we say it's because you didn't want us there this is not about our community this is not about resilience this is not about working together it's about you justifying your job for your friends bloody phone won't stop sorry she's got two hundred and ninety seven thousand dollars to waste on herself and robin and Pauline and whoever that other lady was. Because it ain't gonna do shit for us. We already know what to do. We're happy to sit there and tell you what we did and what we know we need to do, but you weren't interested, Susie. You just wanted to tick the box, say that you came to Nimitabel and you fuck off again. That's what it is. And I'm calling you out. So you come back to Nimitabel, to the Pioneer Hall, you give us a date in advance and the community will turn up and you redo this meeting, Susie Diver. And you actually communicate with the people who you serve as a public servant. And if you don't like being a public servant, then fuck off and get a job at Perisher or something. We don't need your service if it's sour. Engage with us. Talk with us. Show us a bit of respect. Christ, you just put the rates up, for God's sake. You keep taking money out of our pockets, saying you're going to deliver more, you deliver less. That's called Newspeak, Susie. Read the book by George Orwell, 1984. Newspeak. Say one thing and mean something else. You're going to increase the chocolate ration, are you, Susie? Do you know what I mean by that, Susie? Oh, yes. You think you can come out to Nimitabel and treat that Andrew Thaler bloke like shit? You never met me. I never met you before. Five minutes and I know all I need to know about you. And I'll put it on record. 
even as the sun fades in a lovely sunset. So that was my afternoon. Kind of buggered my day just to be able to participate in that on behalf of the community. But I didn't just do that for Nimitabel. I did this for all of our villagers in Monero to find out what the hell this planned scam is that Susie's running with the council. And so now you all know, call it out, demand a proper meeting with plenty of notice and go along and talk to them about how you think your villages and towns could be better prepared in anticipating a disaster and to come out of a disaster on the other side. See, that's me sacrificing my time for all of you. And I have a little bit of fun telling the story afterwards. So thank you. I will clock off. I've got some other stories I need to share, but I've got to return some of these phone calls and it's getting a bit dark. And uh, I might check in tomorrow and give you some updates on the other shit that's going on because there's a lot going on. Thanks for tuning in. Paul Lloyd. Hello, Paul Lloyd. Oh, I'll finish on this. We'll talk about my favourite family tomorrow. And I'll give you this word of warning, Lloyd and Nolan family. You keep attacking me, I'll keep telling the truth about you. Because according to the news reports this morning, there's a whole lot more to this story. Oh yes, there is. Ain't that the damn truth? But how much of that story do you want out in the public? That's called check. Your move. You family, Nolans, Lloyds, you apologise to me publicly, correct the record, and I'm happy to forget you. But you keep attacking me like you do, I'll keep putting up the truth. Because that's my job. You fuck with the wrong guy when you took me on, Nolan family. It's that simple, and I have no respect for you, and I never will. Tomorrow's chat's going to be quite interesting, isn't it? Thanks for tuning in.